Hey kids, welcome back to yet another online lesson. It's so wonderful to be back here on this amazing platform. If you don't know already, my name is Kawik Azigasa and we're so excited to have you guys join us this week. So in today's lesson, we learn about forgiveness and we'll be looking at Mark 2 verse 1 to 12. So why don't you stay tuned and enjoy the lesson. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us through our online programs over the last two years. Some news for us is that we are coming to the end of our online kids ministry videos. Next week, Sunday, will be our last online program. And next week, we've got some special surprises in that we've got some highlights from the last two years that we're going to show you. We trust that God has spoken to you and that you've had loads of fun through this online program. We are focusing more on in-person church. And so if you've been coming on Sundays, you'll know that we've got full kids programs Again, leaders are back and we're so excited to invest in your lives. So if you haven't joined us at Jubilee Observatory or in the city, please do come and join us. We'd love to see you there. See you soon again. Bye-bye. You're the only one 
so there was a man and he was very very sad because all day he just sat there he couldn't walk and he just sat and he begged every single day so some of his friends heard that there was this man named jesus and jesus was a great teacher and he was teaching in the city and so they tried to take him there but there was one problem the problem was that Jesus was surrounded by people, crowds and crowds and crowds of people. And if you were late coming to hear him, you couldn't get to him. Jesus was inside a house and all of these people were with him inside the house. And they, they were enjoying Jesus teaching. He was telling stories. And they were loving it. But the lame man couldn't get to Jesus because he couldn't walk. But the lame man had some friends. And you perhaps know this story. So he laid down on like a stretcher. And it looks like he's floating, but I promise you he wasn't floating. And his friends, they carried him. And when they got to Jesus, when they got to the house, they realized there's no way they could get in. There were so many people, they couldn't even get to the door. The window was packed full of people. So one of them decided to have a plan. So they climbed some stairs. So they had this fantastic plan. They went onto the roof. They made a big hole in the roof. And they lowered their friend down right in front of Jesus. And in front of everyone, suddenly there was silence. Everyone was focused now, not on Jesus, but on this lame guy. And Jesus looked at him and he said, what do you want me to do? And then he said, I in the power that I have, I forgive your sin. Suddenly, there were a whole lot of people in the crowd who were very, very angry. And they were the Pharisees. And they said to Jesus, who, who is this? Who is this guy who can forgive sins? No one can forgive sins except God. And Jesus knew that they were telling each other this and they were grumbling. And then he turned to those people that were angry and he said, what is more difficult to do? Is it more difficult to forgive sin or is it more difficult to tell this lame man to get up and walk? And these angry people thought about it and they thought, mm, that's a difficult question. We're not sure. And then Jesus turned to the lame man and he said, get up and pick up your mat. And suddenly this man who had been lame, he couldn't walk at all, suddenly stood up. So miraculously, the lame man suddenly got up and he picked up his mat and everyone in the room was absolutely amazed they couldn't believe it and more and more people came to listen to jesus how do you think that guy would have felt he would have been like over the moon he would, it would have been the best day of his life lowered down embarrassed suddenly everyone's looking at him can't walk when you can't walk for a while it's like i wonder how you feel sometimes if you've been sitting for a long time and then you stand up quickly. Your legs are stiff. Or sometimes you get pins and needles in your legs. Imagine this guy's legs. For years and years and years and years, he hadn't used his legs. It would have been impossible. But nothing is impossible for God. So what do you think was the biggest miracle that Jesus did? Was the biggest miracle forgiving this guy's sin? Or was the biggest miracle healing his legs so that he could walk again? What do you think? That's not an easy question to answer, hey? But the, the best thing 
that God can do for us is to forgive us. Even better than healing us. Now I want to ask you some questions. So from 1 to 10. 1 is you don't want to forgive the person. You don't think they deserve forgiveness. And it would be very difficult to forgive them. 10, it's easy to forgive. Okay, how about this? Someone at school uh, walks past you and bumps your desk and you get a fright. 1 to 10, what do you think? I think that's probably like 9. Hey, that's really easy to forgive that person. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay, how about this one? Um, your brother or sister messes up your bed by jumping all over it. What do you think? Mm, maybe, maybe like a six, hey? It's not too difficult, but it's, you know, it would be very annoying. But what about this one? You've just got a brand new pair of shoes, brand, brand, brand new. And you take them and you're wearing them out and then you're playing a game. So you take your shoes off and you leave them in a special place. And when you come back, they're gone. And you search everywhere and you ask everyone and no one can see them. No one knows where they are. And then, half an hour later, you see another child wearing your brand, brand new shoes. How would you, how would you feel? Angry? Offended? You'd probably want to go and smack that person. Don't. But that's maybe how you would feel. How difficult would it be to forgive that person? Pretty difficult, huh? Maybe... Maybe like two. My pen's not working. I am not going to forgive this pen. I'm not working. Maybe a two. That would be so difficult. How about this one? Um, your parents say to you that you can't watch TV for the entire holidays. Would that be difficult to forgive? Yeah, you'd be like, no ways. I don't want to listen to that. So some things are really easy to forgive. Some things are hard. And the Bible says that all the sin, all the offense, all the things that we have done wrong, they separate us from God. And so we need God's forgiveness. We need him to forgive us. He forgave us by sending Jesus, his son, in our place. So we should have been punished for all the wrong things that we've done. They separate us from God, but also they are ultimately the wrong things we do are against God. And God didn't hold a grudge. He didn't say, no, you can't watch TV for a month. He didn't say, no, you're going to get the punishment. Yes, there is judgment. But he said, I will send my son, Jesus. He took the punishment because I forgive you. That's amazing. Now, maybe there's something that you're aware of. Maybe you've done one of these things. Maybe you want to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I don't think this lame man, the Bible doesn't tell us that he said sorry. But it's a great thing to be able to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. So let's do that right now. You can pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that your love went so far as to send your son Jesus. And thank you that you're a forgiving God. Thank you that you forgave this man and you healed him. Lord, we want to say sorry. Sorry for the things we've done wrong. The things we've done wrong to others. The, the wrong things we've thought. The things we should have done. 
that we haven't done. Thank you that you have forgiven God. Thank you that you forgive us. Lord, I pray that when we receive your forgiveness, we would also receive freedom, freedom from those sins. And we would know that we can have a relationship with you. Thank you for your incredible love. Amen. Bye, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Craig. I'm Robin. Jeremy asked us to join Eternity a short while ago. And at first we were really nervous because we hadn't seen each other for two years. Everyone, our friends at church and even the kids at church, we haven't seen them for two years. We were feeling a little bit anxious because we didn't know what to expect. And then we started and it was great. We played games, we had fun together, we learned Bible stories, and basically we learned everything that God wants us, or we learned some stories about what God wants us to do when it comes to loving each other and loving Him. So just the other evening, Craig and I were talking. We really can talk a lot. But we came across this verse in Galatians 5, verse 13, and we were just blown away by what it said. And so we want to share it with you guys, if that's okay. For you are called to freedom. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And we were just so blown away by the fact that God has called us to freedom in order that we can love each other, love our neighbor, and serve each other well in love. But now you must be wondering, who exactly is my neighbor? Well, your neighbor is that person across the room from you that you know. But your neighbor is also that person across the other side of the room that you don't know. And the nice part about this is we have an opportunity to meet new people as well as the ones we already know. They're all our neighbors and God wants us to love each other the way he loves us. So can we encourage you that as we get together in the next few weeks in Blaze and Eternity, that we go and say hi to someone that we may not have said hi to before. Or we go and start a conversation about how was school this week? What, what have you been doing? And start a conversation and make friends and learn to love each other well. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you so much, Jubilee Kids, for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed the lesson. We'll see you next time. Same place, same time. Have amazing and wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everyone.